Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield myself uh, five minutes. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, um, today could easily be a day um, toward a celebration um, for myself as an original co-sponsor of this bill and Mr. Miller of North Carolina, my colleague who also is an original co-sponsor of this bill, um, perhaps leading to a celebration um, of final passage. But I approach this day um, with two um, rather major uh, concerns about celebrating. Um, first of all, I approach it um, um, asking what if um, six years ago um, we had passed the legislation that Mr. Miller and I proposed to the House of Representatives um, at that time. Um, isn't it likely that um, the major meltdown in our credit system um, would not have occurred, and uh, there's the prospect that had that not occurred, um, the major economic crisis in which our country finds itself now uh, trying to dig our way out may also have been avoided. So the decisions that we make um, have consequences. They have had consequences uh, to our credit markets, and they um, have consequences going forward and have had consequences to our economy. So this is not a day uh, for celebration if we pass the bill uh, and the Senate passes the bill and it gets signed into law, uh, we will always wonder um, what if we had done this when we originally uh, brought forward the bill and dealt with the issue uh, when it should have been dealt with. Second, my observation is that this has been a very difficult and delicate uh, bill to balance because uh, we have tried to, on the one hand, not dry up the credit, the money that is out there to be uh, in the market for lenders to make loans uh, to potential homeowners and to current homeowners to refinance, while at the same time cutting back on the abuses that took place in the marketplace that led to the credit crisis and the economic meltdown that I just described. Balancing those two interests uh, has been difficult, and uh, unfortunately, those interests were balanced inappropriately in the past because credit obviously was made too readily available to too many people who could not afford to pay it back, who uh, are now in foreclosure, uh, foreclosure proceedings, now in bankruptcies, and we are seeing the negative consequences of an unrestrained market. Um, so obviously the balance was not drawn appropriately in the past. And um, now we face the argument uh, from a number of my colleagues that, uh, well, we can just leave this alone and let the market take care of itself and we shouldn't be doing anything, and we're going to hear those arguments throughout today's general debate and no doubt uh, on tomorrow when we start uh, dealing with the amendment process. Uh, that's a laissez-faire attitude that uh, uh, I would my, remind my colleagues is the same 
laissez-faire attitude that we faced years ago when we first introduced this bill, which I would suggest to you if we had acted then, we wouldn't be here now. The time has expired. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Texas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I think we will have a good debate today. Because